The Magic Thief, Chapter 13. The next day, Neveri told me I would be presented to the magisters so they could approve me as his apprentice. Then I'd be able to start school. On our way to Magister's Hall, Neveri seemed distracted. He walked fast through the tunnels, and I had to run to keep up with him. I knew better than to ask him any of the questions bubbling around in my head. What were the magisters going to ask me? Did they know I'd spied on their meetings? Would they care that I couldn't read yet? Would they want to know about my locus magicalicus? Could they tell if I lied to them? What if they wouldn't accept me? We arrived at Magister's Hall and I followed Nevery down a long, echoing hallway. When we got to the big double doors at the end, he said, Wait out here, boy, until you're called for. Before I could answer, he'd already swept into the Magister's chamber, slamming the door behind him. I shouldn't have been too nervous, but I was shivery with it. I jittered before the door for a while, waiting for it to open and one of the Magisters to drag me in for a wrangle, but no one came. I sat down on the floor to wait. Finally, the door creaked open and I jumped to my feet. The wizard named Periwinkle stood in the doorway with her hands on her hips. I peered at her through the ragged fringe of hair hanging in my eyes. She wore the same grey robes as before, with a patch on the sleeve with a blue flower stitched on it, over a plain dark blue dress. She was broad and strong looking with grey hair in a messy bun. She looked me up and down. You're Nevery's boy? She asked. I nodded. Well, she didn't look happy. You're not what I expected. I wondered what she had expected. Somebody taller, maybe? Curse Nevery anyway, she muttered. Boy looks like a gutter rat. I looked down at myself. But I'm wearing boots, I said. And my brown coat, a mostly clean shirt, a woolen scarf, and trousers with patches on the knees, not holes. Hmm, never mind, lad. But tell Nevery to give you a haircut. Now, one thing before you go in, she lowered her voice. Nevery is not... She paused and looked at the ceiling, rubbing her chin. He is not universally popular among the magisters. Because of that, some of our members may seek to withhold approval of your apprenticeship. Politics, she was saying. Some of the magisters might reject me in order to get at Nevery. Even so, I was Nevery's apprentice, whether the magisters liked it or not. She narrowed her eyes. Do you understand? Tread carefully if you can. Right. I understood. I nodded. Very well. She turned, pushed the door open wider, and motioned for me to go into the meeting chamber. The room was as I remembered it, except not as big as it had seemed to the cat me. The table ran the length of the room and had lots of empty seats, as if there had once been more magisters than there were now. On the walls were grimy oil paintings in tarnished frames and a few bookshelves crammed with dusty books that looked like nobody ever read them. At the other end of the room was a wide fireplace with no fire in it. As I walked into the chamber, the wizards around the table stared at me. They'd been arguing, I could tell by the smoke coming out of Nevery's ears and the snarl on the face of the wizard sitting opposite him at the table. This had to be Pedavox. He was very tall, taller even than Nevery, and broad, with white hair and beard, gleaming white teeth, and red lips. And I'd seen him before. He was the wizard I'd seen at the Underlords, the wizard in the secret underground workroom. I swallowed down my surprise and tried not to stare. Pedavox wore black worm silk robes with rows of gold braid at the cuffs and the collar, and a patch on the sleeve with gold threaded runes stitched on it. He also wore heavy gold rings on his fingers and had a cloudy white crystal about the size of a thumbnail hanging from a gold chain around his neck. His locus magicalicus. Interesting that he wore it right out in the open like that. Must be proud of it, wanting to show it off. I didn't like him. He didn't like me either. He looked at me like you'd look at the bottom of your shoe after you'd stepped in something squishy and smelly. Stand over there. Periwinkle said, pointing to the end of the table. I obeyed and kept still while the seated wizards inspected me. Nevery gave me a quick glance and looked away, scowling as if he didn't like what he saw. Periwinkle sat down beside him. Around the rest of the table sat Brumby, plump and comfortable in his yellow worm silk robes, the keen-looking lady Sandera, the sour sharp one Trammel, and sitting beside Pedavox, the small skinny wizard who looked like a bat the one who had let the cat me into the chamber before. Brumby cleared his throat. Ah, uh, Nevery, 
Nevery, still looking furious, gave a curt nod. All right, Brumby, we'll do this according to the forms. He pointed at me, but glared across the table at Pettibox. I, Neverick Flinglass, present to my fellow magisters for their approval this boy who would be my apprentice. Very good, Brumby said quickly, looking nervously around the table. This is just a formality, obviously. Can we move to accept Khan as Neverick's apprentice? I reserve the right to pose certain questions, said Pettibox. Even though he was a big man, his voice was high-pitched and sharp. Brumby sighed. Of course, Pettivox. Of course, I thought. Pose away. Pettivox leaned forward, vulture-like, his hands folded on the table. So, tell us, Con, where you lived before coming to your master. Hmm, not the question I'd been expecting. In the twilight, I said. I see, and you had people looking after you? I shook my head. What was he getting at? Pettivox gave me a false smile. Then, how did you earn your living in the twilight? I thought about the answer before I gave it. Pettivox was working with Crow, I guessed, so he might know more about me than he should. Maybe he wanted me to lie so he could, could catch me out. As a thief, mostly, I said. Sometimes I picked pockets, but I'm better at picking locks. The magisters didn't like that answer. Periwinkle frowned and Brumby fidgeted with his pen, but they would have liked it even less if I'd lied to them. Pettivox leaned back in his chair and gave Nevery a triumphant look. A thief, Nevery? Only you would dare introduce such a person as an apprentice. Nevery folded his arms, but did not answer. Sandera spoke up for the first time, her voice clear. Isn't it likely, Pettivox, that this boy has already demonstrated his ability to Nevery, which is why he took him on and why we should accept him? She looked kindly at me. Will you show us your locus magicalicus? Drats. I'd been hoping they wouldn't ask about a locust stone. I haven't found one yet, I said. Pettivox snorted. This is ridiculous. Brumby, who already knew that I didn't have a locust magicalicus, shook his head. Periwinkle's frown deepened. Go on, Nevery, I thought. Set them straight. But Nevery didn't say anything. He sat with his arms crossed, scowling down at the tabletop. Pettivox said, well, Nevery? Nevery remained silent. I shivered and clenched my hands to keep myself still. He was going to change his mind about me. Finally, he looked up and nodded as if coming to a decision. I do accept him, and you will have to accept him too on my word or deal with the consequences. Pedavox slammed his fist onto the table. A threat, typical. What can Nevery possibly achieve by forcing us to accept as an apprentice a boy thief who has no locus magicalicus and is probably reporting everything he learns to the Underlord? Oh, I don't think so, Brumby said hurriedly. Khan is not a spy, I don't think. He shot me a quick glance. Not for the Underlord, at any rate. I think we ought to give him a chance, for his own sake, and not just because Nevery asks us to. I propose that we accept him as an apprentice, Pettivox opened his mouth to protest, but Brumby went on quickly. Conditionally, if he can find a locus magicalicus in, shall we say, 30 days, is that enough time, Nevery? Nevery nodded. It will have to be. He pointed to the door. We're finished with you, boy. Wait outside. He didn't have to ask me twice. I skiffed out to wait in the hall. I closed the door behind me and leaned against it because my knees were shaking. It hadn't gone too badly, had it? The magisters had accepted me, sort of. I just had to find my locus magicalicus. I had 30 days. But where was I going to start?